about a Sonic, gay about a Sonic, a sewing about a Sonic. Okay, here's the challenge for this video. I'm gonna try to stuff as many Sonic video game references from Sonic 2 as possible within 10 minutes. It's gonna be hard, but <laughs> hey, it's Patrice. And there's a lot of references to the Sonic games throughout Sonic 2, so let's not waste any time. Also, big, big spoilers ahead. So, uh, watch the movie before you watch this video. Alright, let's get it. It's established very early in the movie that Sonic can't swim, a skill that he's left underdeveloped since the very first game and pretty much in all other Sonic the Hedgehog media. In the scene where Sonic goes to save Knuckles from drowning, he swallows an air bubble to buy himself some more time underwater, just like he has to do in the water levels in almost every other Sonic game, but most notably in Sonic 1, 2, and 3. Also I've been seeing people complain about the lack of Sonic music in the films, and while this is a valid concern, cause I agree with that sentiment, they should add some more Sonic music in these movies. The drowning theme actually does play for a few seconds during the score that covers the drowning scene. The score is called You Don't Have To Be Alone Anymore, and the drowning theme shows up around 1 minute in, so if you're interested in listening, go ahead and look it up because we can't play it in this video because of, you know, copyright stuff. Apparently, Agent Stone did really well for himself during Robotnik's absence, with him now being the owner of a coffee shop called The Mean Bean. Stone must really know his Eggman history because the coffee shop's name is a reference to the 1993 Genesis title, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, a puzzle game that highly resembles Tetris but is more like a Poyo Poyo Dr. Robotnik reskin. There's a ton of deep cut references like The Mean Bean throughout the film, another of which was to Sonic 06. The way Sonic finishes Robotnik off by lightly tapping his foot on the Death Egg robot is done the exact same way as when he lightly taps a Batnik with his foot in the Sonic 06 intro cutscene. Now that was one I wasn't expecting. The creators really know their Sonic moments. Sonic Adventure is also referenced a couple times throughout the film. One of these adventure references happened during the dance battle scene. When Sonic is thrown into the air, he strikes his iconic pose from the Sonic Adventure cover. The game is referenced again when Sonic is trying to fight crime in the city as his jumping from building to building and chasing cop cars is very similar to one of the cutscenes from the game. Also the sewers eruption is a reference to the intro of Sonic Adventure, when chaos' flooding of the city begins with the sewers exploding. 2003's Sonic Heroes gets some shine too. During the final battle against Robotnik, Knuckles throws Sonic into some badniks just like he does during the Team Sonic campaign. Hey, and the three even run in the same formation as they do when you're playing as Sonic. All that was missing was Tails carrying both Sonic and Knuckles at the same time. Let's leave this to Tails. Anyone who's a Sonic fan knows that Sonic Adventure 2 has a huge presence in this film, possibly foreshadowing its loose adaptation in the third movie. So let's quickly go over how the game gets referenced. First, the inclusion of GUN, the military organization that made its first appearance in Adventure 2. Then again, we see printed on the GUN helicopters SA2, the abbreviation of the game. And once again, with the inclusion of Project Shadow and the fact that it actually dates back 50 years, just like in Sonic Adventure 2. Robotnik's giant robot is designed very similarly to the Death Egg robot from Sonic 2. In fact, the final boss in the Sonic 2 game is the Death Egg robot, so the choice to make it the final obstacle in the movie is pretty poetic. The giant robot is also similar to one of the final bosses from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. If you don't collect all the Chaos Emeralds before the final stages, the final boss for both Sonic and Tails is the giant Eggman Robo, powered by the Master Emerald. So really the movie's robot is a combination of both bosses. From the moment Tails joins the universe, he's seen holding his famous gadget, the Miles Electric, a device that has appeared in numerous Sonic titles. One of the device's uses is language translation as seen during the dance battle scene. The translation feature is also used in Sonic Colors as a way to communicate with the Wisp. Also at one point in the film, the Miles Electric has the characters MD-1121-1992 printed on the screen, which was the release date of Sonic Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis. Tails flying a plane might have come out of nowhere for people not too familiar with the franchise, but the two Tails Fox has been flying his iconic biplane, the Tornado, ever since its introduction in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in 1992. The movie even gives the plane a game accurate red and white paint job. Knuckles' initial pursuit of Sonic ended in a bust, with Sonic and Tails being able to fly away to safety. Knuckles, on the other hand, was able to save himself from falling off the cliff by using his gloves to climb up the mountain, a reference to the echidna's ability to climb vertical surfaces in the games. Knuckles' crazy strength is also 
also shown when he breaks through the walls of a Master Emerald's temple. Another reference to Knuckles' ability, this one being able to destroy walls in some of the Sonic games. Now there are a ton of level references throughout the movie, starting with Tom's ringtone being the theme of Green Hill in Sonic 1 and every other Sonic game that Green Hill is brought back into. <laughs> then again with the Labyrinth Zone which director Jeff Fowler confirmed the Master Emerald Temple was based on, complete with underwater segments and slides. Splash Hill from Sonic 4 is referenced when Knuckles destroys a truck full of Splash Hill themed water bottles, and the Ice Cap Zone from both Sonic Adventure and Sonic 3 are referenced when Sonic is snowboarding down the mountain slope. During the movie's intro and in Robotnik's lair, we see the classic Eggman logo that is used to narcissistically brand most of his inventions throughout the Sonic games. We also see the iconic egg-shaped Eggman look while Agent Stone is sifting through the different outfits for his boss to wear upon his return. Oh yeah, and Robotnik is now rocking the traditional Eggmobile. Eggman's most common method of transportation in the game. While the inside of the Master Emerald's Temporal is a reference to the Labyrinth Zone from Sonic 1, the outside looks strikingly similar to Angel Island, a floating island introduced in Sonic 3 that houses the Master Emerald. In subsequent Sonic titles, the Master Emerald's energy is used to keep the island afloat, and also where the Knuckles tribe resided to protect the gym. Agent Stone's loyalty isn't very well rewarded in the Sonic movies, in fact, he gets a ton of crap. My man is trying his best. Give him a break, please. During the final battle, Stone's initial role is to help control the Death Egg robot, though he seems to have a lot of trouble doing so, resulting in some scolding from Robotnik. Stone only manages to get a hang of things when he whips out the instruction manual that rocks the old design of the Sega Genesis box art. A nod to the system where Sonic got his start. In the final heartwarming baseball scene in which Sonic now has friends and family, Rachel acts as an announcer to Sonic and Friends game. When Tails comes up to bat, she actually says his full name, Miles Tails Prowler, revealing Tails to be his middle name and his first and last name being a play on words of Miles Per Hour, just like in the games. In a post by Twitter user Ultima Shadow X, it's confirmed that the character design lead Tyson Heath integrated a reference to the 2006 game Sonic Riders. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming either. During the scene where Sonic and Tails are searching for the compass that'll lead them to the Master Emerald's whereabouts, the two encounter a giant owl statue. The letters under the owl statue are actually in Babylonian, a fictional language spoken by the Babylon rogues, the antagonists of the Sonic Riders games. The idea there was that since both the owls and the rogues or birds, it would be a pretty cool connection. Knuckles big moment of punching the Master Emerald out of Robotnik was yet another reference to the Echidna's abilities, that being the ability to punch the super out of characters. More specifically, it's a reference to the intro of Sonic 3 when Knuckles punches the Chaos Emeralds out of Super Sonic. When Eggman returned, he was not messing around as he came back with a new plan, a new look, and some new tech. Among that new tech were incredibly menacing giant B-shaped robots. These robots are references to the B-robots called Buzz Bombers that first appeared in Sonic 1 and continued to appear from time to time in newer games. Their inclusion makes me wonder what other Batniks the movies might adapt in the future. And uh, are there animals in there? Are animals powering these robots? Shadow's inclusion along with his lore was a huge reference, but the way he appeared on screen was also a reference to his first appearance in Sonic Heroes. In the film, Shadow is released from his cryogenically frozen capsule, wakes up and looks straight into the camera with a close up right on his eyes. This exact scene plays out in Sonic Heroes when Rouge frees Shadow from his chamber. Except in Heroes, it ends with a huge battle between Shadow and Omega. When Dr. Eggman betrays Knuckles and grabs the Master Emerald, he declares his victory stating, Chaos is power, a reference to a speech made by Takal the Echidna in Sonic Adventure 1. In the game, she says, the servers of the seven chaos, chaos is power, power enriched by the heart, the controller is the one that unifies the chaos. While she doesn't exist in this canon yet, it was actually really cool to see her character referenced in the movie. During Knuckles' second pursuit of Sonic in the Ice Cap Zone, Knuckles gets a good hit on Sonic which results in the blue blur losing all his rings. A reference to the characters losing rings after taking damage in pretty much every Sonic game ever. The scene also signifies Sonic being on his last leg in that situation. Because you know, when you have zero rings left in the Sonic game, one more hit and you're done for. Remember when Knuckles smashed a little 3D model of Sonic during his meeting with Stone and Robotnik? Well, that 3D model was actually Sonic's waiting pose when he's idle for too long in the games. That idle pose was one of the first displays of Sonic's personality and what got a lot of people hooked on the franchise. Last but not least, Tails biplane no longer says Sonic on the side. Instead, it says 761. So why this change and what does it mean? Well, the change actually is a reference to the speed of sound, which is roughly 761 miles per hour, which in Sonic games and other Sonic media, the hedgehog is known to run just as fast or faster than. <sighs> Phew, 
We did it. Look, don't listen to anybody who says the people who worked on Sonic 2 didn't know the source material because this list illustrates just how dedicated they are to the franchise and that a lot of them are just as big as fans as all of us. If I missed any other game references, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I love, love, love to hear more about all the tiny details the creators managed to sneak in. That's all I got for you guys this time. Also, I have this theory that Big the Cat is going to be the real villain of Sonic 3. So yeah, forget Shadow, y'all.